back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And we are putting the spotlight on the different reasons for going vegan. Some choose it as an extreme way to live a healthier life, while others see it as a justice movement of doing the least harm to animals. Whatever your reason, there are some important questions to ask yourself before making the switch, like whether your body is suited for the vegan lifestyle. And that's why we have dietitian Megan pence Clates in studio to answer those questions questions for you. This is such an interesting topic because I think a lot of people are watching now and they've participated in Veganuary and they've tried all these trendy trends, but do they actually know what it takes to become a vegan? And Megan, this is where I'm hoping you will shed some light for us. When it comes to people choosing to go vegan, what food groups or what food is considered vegan? Absolutely. And it is really important that when you do go vegan, that you include all these different types of foods. So it is all, uh, uh, all plant foods. So anything that includes something like your different fruits and vegetables, we're talking about grains, of course, especially whole grains, quinoa, for an example. Then you start looking at your pulses and your legumes, which are really important. And of course, then looking at something like a soya and tofu and temper, those all come into the vegan lifestyle. So anything that is a plant will be considered part of the vegan lifestyle. So eggs are out, but the question is always honey. Honey is not from the bee, but the bee's involved in making the honey. Is that seen as vegan? It is not, unfortunately. So just the same type of um, you know, issue would be when you look at you know, eating meat or, or having milk. So the milk would not be considered vegan. Um, and so the honey would not also be considered vegan. Okay. Now, you know, a lot of people assume, oh, anyone can do the vegan lifestyle, but what type of personality or who is eligible to actually embrace the vegan lifestyle? I think it's really important that if you decide on a vegan lifestyle, you must realize that there are certain nutrients that are a bit more tricky to get into your diet and you have to focus on that. So the one um, is of course protein, very typically. It's not that you can't get in enough protein, but you need to focus on it. At least a third of your plate should have some type of um, you know, vegetarian or vegan protein in it. Mm. So from soya right through to, um, you know, quinoa, um, your, your nuts and your seeds, etc. Then you're looking at, if you're going to go into that lifestyle, all the different nutrients that include B12, uh, vitamin B12, uh, calcium, iron, and you also something like zinc. And importantly, uh, certain age groups mm -hmm. obviously have higher requirements for certain nutrients. So that would be like your children and your teens you would also see that in pregnant women and of course the elderly. So these are a higher risk group. It's not that you can't go vegan, but you need to be very, very astute and you might need supplementation. I was about to ask, so if you're not hitting the, checking the boxes with the amount of proteins, all those vitamins that you need, supplements would then be the, the next alternative. Megan, what happens when these individuals lack getting those nutrients and vitamins in their body? Yeah, that's a really good question because you don't always recognize it, but if you're not getting in enough protein, your body can't make protein. So with protein, one of the most important things is, is to get it in a good um, protein source. So mm. you're looking at something like soya, you're looking at combining foods, where you don't have to think about that if you are including animal products. So combining something like rice with your legumes, for example, will give you a better type of quality protein. So that's important to bring in. Then, of course, we're looking at something like your vitamin B12. So you can actually, together with your iron, those are basically two important nutrients that you have to focus on more carefully. Mm. And if you don't, you can become anemic. Oh. Okay, so that's important. Calcium is a very important one as well. And that's why when you do look at it, a plant-based milk, make sure that it's fortified with something like calcium. Okay. Because that's the, one of the reasons why we take in uh, a, a milk product. Okay, it's so to get the calcium for the strong bones. Yes. Now, I know there's a lot of misinformation and you can always, I think a lot of people also just assume vegan is healthier or a product says vegan, but we don't always read the nutritional label to know what is in those products. What is some of the misinformation that people need to keep their mind, like their eyes peeled to, if they are choosing to perhaps embark on a vegan lifestyle? 
Absolutely. So when something is vegan, making sure that you're not also adding in something like uh, a lot of sugar or a lot of the wrong types of fats and rather going for your whole foods but in incorporating and mixing as much as possible. So getting in your good oils like your omega-3 that comes from flaxseed or canola or walnuts, those are the types of whole foods that you want to bring in and the more variety you bring in, especially like I said earlier, a third of your plate being more your protein sources like your soya and your, your tofu, that's going to be where you can actually make sure that you're getting in your necessary nutrients. And it's so important to get all those nutrients in. Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you learned something. If that is something you are embarking on or thinking about doing, stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show because we've got all the inspiration for you, including some delicious recipes.